Oh, I need to put the um, video up a little bit. Okay, hi everyone. Um, I was so excited because this is our first patronage, patronage, patron only, patron, patron only video, patron only, patron only video. So that means that you have become a patron of us. So excited! Well done. Thank you so much. Anyway, oh, yeah. so this is our first patron only video. Um, pardon. Uh, um, so in week nine, you would have seen that I tried doing a painting technique on some floorboards and it didn't come out very well. So um, we're going to try again and I'm going to show you. And um, if you're seeing this video, it means it turned out okay. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll give it a go and I'm going to try another technique and, and see if it works. Um, we are outside Ted's workshop on number two bar number two so we've got the piggeries we've got the coaching house hang on i'll show you while we're here but we are going to do a kind of full plans for you guys so right at the end is the that is piggeries and stables next to it is the coaching house which one day we hope to become our house barn number one and barn number two um which at the moment Ted's using as his workshop but um that will move eventually um anyway so going back to the planks um it's it's really cold this week you, if you saw week nine video on youtube you'll know that we've had loads of rain loads of sunstorms i've got so many layers on because it went from 39 degrees down to what is it today ted about 11. Uh, so it feels really cold oh you've got a thermometer well i was pretty good then when i was nearly on the ball i said 11 12 degrees so um now i apologize if there's any wind noise on this i'm still working on my phone but for my birthday i'm hoping fingers crossed to get a new um camera yay um so hopefully it'll be better but for now you've got to put up with this um so we brought some more planks and what we think we did wrong is uh putting the wax on underneath although all the youtube clips i saw said to do that but um we're going to try it without because it it certainly wasn't um strong enough for for people to walk on so maybe that's just the furniture when you do furniture you put the wax on first i don't know so we've tried it anyway without putting the wax on first um i've done two boards in red two boards in the cobalt blue the dark blue um and <laughs> sorry i don't know if you just saw a hand taking a pee behind me <laughs> how you not supposed to do it there um sorry and uh so now i'm going to do the second coat and then i'll need to leave it to dry so i did these yesterday i've left them to dry for a whole day um and i'm going to try and do this before it starts raining again um so i oh i've got the wrong one out oh no i've got the wrong hang bear with me because i've got the wrong paint out i need to get the cocoa maybe it's the cocoa one in there i got it i got it okay so next step i'm doing the cocoa and i'm going to pardon yeah, I think I should be drinking. Oh, it's starting to rain again. Okay, I'm going to have to go back inside now. Okay, we'll come back inside because um, it started raining. Um, and we're going to start on the next coat. So I've got it. Baby, have you got something I can stir with? What are you making? Some shells? I'll just make it. Yeah, make it. Sure. Yeah, Oh, that's a bit good. Come here. Can I use it? Yeah. Okay, so if you remember, this is chalk paint. Um, it's supposed to be very durable, good for wood, good for furniture. I think you could put it on more or less anything, supposedly. Uh, very expensive, though. 
Um, right, so. I've got the two red, I've got the two blue. Now I'm around the wrong way. Because I want the reds on the right are the red for right and blues on the left. Because once I put the cocoa on, obviously I may not know which one's which for the next coat. Um, so I'm putting cocoa on next. Another thing I did with this, different to what I did the first time, was obviously leaving it because I was too impatient the first time round um, and didn't didn't leave it long enough i don't think um but the second thing i'm doing is i'm not watering it down this time i'm just putting it on and i'm going to use the sanding technique instead of the whitewashing technique so we will sand it back um to what we want in the final design um so i will probably fast forward this bit so I don't bore you and um, and yeah I'm going to put cocoa so the middle coat will be the same on all of them um, because the blue and the red I really want kind of as an accent I want more of the wood and the cocoa coming through than anything else um, so that's why I'm sort of putting this in the middle again this is all trial and error because uh, we really don't know what we're doing. Okay, we're back again and we have let these dry for a couple of hours. Now these are the two that had the blue coat on the bottom and the cocoa on top. So I'm now going to put the red coat on the top of it. Okay, so we've got our red. And that's going to go on top. Now, as we did before, I'm not going to cover these entirely because we don't need to because we're going to scratch a lot of it back anyway. So it's going to have a rough top, some areas darker than others. I'll bring it over to the camera so you can see in a minute. Um, this is what I was talking about before about dry brushing. So hopefully you can see that. Um, it's not completely covered. It's got some areas that are darker than others. Okay, so that's the red ones. All done. So we'll leave them over the other side to dry. And these are the ones that we previously painted red with the cocoa on top. And we're going to put the blue now on the top of that, the um, cobalt blue. Horrible blue? No, not the horrible blue. <laughs> The Colbert blue. Oh, Colbert. 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 Okay, so back with the boards. Um, it's bright and early in the morning, and it's the temperature's really cold, but the sun's really bright. But we're still supposed to get more rain later. Um, which is really annoying because I've got so much I need to do outside. But anyway, back to the board. So what I did yesterday, you saw, I'm now going to put a top dry coat on of graphite. Um, and again, yeah, just um, dry brush. Um, and I'm going to do that all over um, all four tanks. So here we go. So how are you all this morning? I hope you're all nice and bright and breezy. It's apparently, it's Sunday here and it's um, French Mother's Day, apparently. Um, so it made me think, I wonder if I can get away with having an English Mother's Day and having a French Mother's Day as well. 
Probably not. Um, <clears throat> so, this week we're hoping to get the um, studying of the walls done in the apartment number two, which will be really nice to get going inside of one of the apartments. Um, Paul, uh, Paul is coming over. Um, he's a builder who's going to help show Ted all the tricks of the trade on the stud walling. Because it's, it's very different with this type of property. Stud walling, oh, well, I always think everything's easy until you, until you actually try it, hence this. But um, it's always my view you could do anything. But the stud walling out here, because the walls are so out, uh, you know, there isn't one wall, one floor that's straight. They're all sort of up and down, in and out. And we want to keep those contours. We don't want to hide and mask them. We actually want to keep them. So it's quite... It's quite a task putting up stud walling on walls and floors like that. But Paul has got really good experience in that. So he's going to come over and uh, do a couple of days of helping Ted, showing him what he needs to do. Because obviously we've got a lot of room to do. Um, we can't pay a builder to do it. Ted needs to learn how to do it himself. So uh, Paul's going to kindly do that for us, which is, is great. You know, it's one thing we have been really grateful of is having builders that we found that are willing to help teach us the skills to be able to do it they know that we don't have the budget to be able to afford to pay them to do it and they're willing to allow us to give it a try ourselves uh so that's something i'm really grateful of you know like the mortaring the the um line watering of the pathway and we'll be doing obviously the inside in the tea room and all the other walls we've got um that's going to come in so handy and save us so much money and yeah i probably would have given it go myself anyway just by watching youtube clips but having somebody actually there showing you telling you what to do is so much better So onto the blue ones. Now the reason why I'm doing the graphite on the top is I do want these to be quite dark. These, well, I'm not sure now. I originally when I started doing these, I was thinking of putting them in the the middle bedroom, which is going to be the medieval bedroom because the the oldest part of the house. It's the original 1360 part of the house where the two sides that flank the main chateau. Sorry, I thought I saw something intriguing. Um, We'll put up at a later date. Uh, we think probably to the right, about 100 years later, and then to the left, another 100 years later. But we really don't know. It's kind of what we're presuming and we're thinking by researching the different stones, the different way it's built. But we're hoping that um, Friday we'll get a bit more information. We're actually we've been invited to go and meet the mayor which I'm really, really nervous about. <coughs> I think Ted is too. He's trying to get out of it, but there's no way he's getting out of it. Um, I don't know if you know, but over here in France, the mayor has a lot of clout. Um, very different to in England. Each town has its own mayor, which is elected by the people. And hello, my darling. What? <laughs> All right. I'm just telling them. Uh, well, I've been telling them about the stud walling that Paul's coming over to uh, teach him stud walling, and we're going to be doing that next week. And wow. um, I was just talking about us going to about the history. We don't know very much, but we're going to see the mayor. Yeah. But yeah, really nervous about it. Um, where did I get to? Yeah. So each town has its own mayor that's elected by the. It is elected by the people, isn't it? Baby. Yeah, they are elected by the people, aren't they? And, um, and the one that's in, has just come into place here is a new mayor. 
because you do tend to find the mayors stay for years and years and years. But this is a new mayor, a lady called Sophie, who's a school teacher. And um, yeah, as I was saying, they, they have a lot of clout. So if they don't like what you're doing, then they can literally say no. And you can't do it, basically. Um, For example, is of a, a, uh, uh, a chap we know um, who's got a, um, a habitable or he pays habitation ta a habitation tax on a, on a property on his land and um, went to the mayor to say I'd like to refurb it um, so I can make it into you know just a simple thing so I can be you know I can stay here I can be on the land can work the land and do what I want to do and the mayor said nah sorry it's because it's not an urban area and it's not had an urbanized uh, certificate he can't do anything about it and and so the guy explained to him what he wanted to do with the land what he was going to do everything like that and the, and the mayor went no nah, sorry and that mayor had been in for power for 40 odd years so i think he's waiting for him to die <laughs> Yeah, that's 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 quite a point. Yeah, I think that's probably the thing. Yeah, it's a long-term project. <laughs> um. Yeah. So Friday will be a really big nervous day for us, but it'll be a bit of a turning point. We hope in getting on the stuff here. Oh, where's that? Oh, I know where we bought that for one of the event. No, I've got a big box of that one we bought for the event. It's a different stuff. I don't know where this comes from. But. Um, anyway, so I've put the graphite on the top. You put the paintbrush down. Red, blue, graphite on the top. So we're going to leave them to dry for a few hours and this afternoon come back. Actually, we might need to leave these to dry for a bit longer if we're going to sand them, might I? Why don't you take them outside? Uh, could do, yeah, we'll, we'll see if we can send them back this afternoon. Probably drive a bit too quickly. And then put the waxing on top and see how they come out. It may be a game that we disregard these. But they, they actually, I think they look a lot better doing them this way. The worst thing is, is Ted actually, in the very beginning, told me to do it this way. And I didn't. Um, and I, I hate saying... You're right. Oh, I'll tell you that hurt. When she had to say that, it hurt. <laughs> oh, did it hurt? You were right. Um, they do look a lot better, so I think they, I think they might head out. Not that I mean that it's or anything, but lads. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, let's come back later and see how they're doing. Okay, so we're back to the board. So we're outside again because Ted's clearing his barn out. Um, so I don't want to get in his way. Anyway. Um, what I've been doing since I've been away is obviously we finished the four boards with the paint we wanted, all the paint effects. So I then started sanding them down. I did this while um, while you was away, or I was away, um, just so that it would speed up the video a bit. And as you can see here, all I've done is sort of sanded back. Let me bring it up. So that in different areas, it takes it back to the cocoa, some areas back to the uh, the plain board, and the blue and red's coming through. Um, and that's kind of the look I wanted before, and I, I like it. Um, it's quite good. So, I'll show you one of the boards, the last one I've got left, sanding it down. And it is purely, it's quite a hard grit, sandpaper. And it's just looking, to see how much you want to take off and what you like, really. So, can I bring the camera over and try and point it downwards so you can actually see while I'm working? Because it might be better. Does that, does that work? Um, so, yeah. Um, I just sanded it back a bit and I just want all the different colours to sort of show through in certain areas. So in some areas I'm doing it a bit harder than others. 
Now, I know somebody's going to tell me an easier way of doing this, but um, obviously when we do all of the floor in this, we worked out it's going to take about 70 planks of wood. Now, these are only half planks anyway. So, yeah, 140 of these. That's a lot of sanding to do. So we're probably using an orbital sander um, for the majority of it and then just accentuate bits by hand. Uh, but as you can see, this little bit here has already brought through the different colours. Now I haven't got much red on this one showing through so I want to take off a bit more so I've got a bit more red. We're getting a, a bit more red coming through now. Now what I might do is when we do the actual floorboards is if we decide that we want more red than blue is when I'm painting them. Obviously when I'm putting the blue on I'll do it with a dry brush but just put very little on. Okay. So I think I'm there with that one let me just get the cloth right so let's just dust off the excess there and hopefully you can see that so the next step is waxing so I've got two here now this was the the top coat was the red with the charcoal and the top coat this was the blue with the charcoal and the reason for doing that was because we don't want the boards to be all the same we want them to be very different and look like they're sort of reclaimed floorboards Baby, have you got any okay more? so i've got my wax pot here um antique fonts and i'm literally just going to go over all the boards with it, getting it into the grain. Now if you want a lighter board you can obviously use just a clear wax but I want them dark because um, like I said before they're going into the what I keep calling the medieval room we think.
these two boards over here I'll just turn this rail slightly are ones that I've already waxed earlier and uh, and done so now we just have to kind of rough them up really and it is just literally that now the more you buff them the shinier they get and the more it comes up but um so there you go there's the finished article now yeah probably like in that way actually um We'll obviously be able to see once they're all in place. The kind of effect it's going to have. I really like it. It's a lot better than before and I think when it's in the room and it's the whole room. Baby, what do you think? Oh, I like it. I do like it. Yeah? Yeah. It looks like a painted floor. I like it. Yeah, it's very random. It's... Do you like it enough to have in the house? Oh, oh yeah, I'd have it. Yeah, you know, yeah. it kind of follows the contour of the board. And, yeah. I don't know. Just for, yeah. Forget about what I'm saying. If, have you got a favourite out of the four? One that you sort of like the best. Not really, because just... I think none of them, if you put them just, if you had exactly the same, you, I think it's just... quite nice the way you yeah, like doing them separately, so they are all different. I definitely think that's the way to go. I definitely think that's the way to go. Um, I really like, you know, I, I have to say, I like the variance in the colour. You know, like some is really red, and some are really blue, and some yeah, are not completely sure. sparse. And I don't think that this isn't brush. I don't think this is brush lines. I think this well, is that. the yeah. I think that's where I've just sanded it. Well, it? I don't know. No, it could be. Yeah, because I can't imagine you'd be brushing all over but the when place. Because you, like, think, yeah. you look at look at this, the way that does that. Yeah. When you think the other day when I and then I put it on with the brush, but I. But wiped that, it with a rag it still come up like that so yeah it's just that where that stops but but you know i i, I think it's it's like it, you know i like the way that it goes across there and i like the way that some of it you know you want imperfection sort yeah, of yeah yeah absolutely you know you know it might be that we do put you know i've got a, my orbital sander i've got a uh, a, a polishing pad on it like a, give that a, a buffer yeah so you could do that but i'm not saying that uh, you know i don't know if it is the i think it looks great and i think if you did it over a whole floor and uh, whether it would you know it's not in any way authentic i think it looks really modern rather than you know but then that's that's kind of the juxtaposition isn't it that you have with uh, well that's the thing so do we want to go I don't, I'm not saying, you know, like, would it, you know, because it's modern, or would we prefer to stick to oak? Okay, so, end of session. I think we're going to let them dry, buff them up, and think on it. Your view would be very much appreciated. Thank you very much.